Hello everyone, and welcome to part 9 of my VR weapons tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to look at holding our sniper with two hands. This will enable the player to aim the gun more easily. I stream game development here on YouTube every Friday night, 9pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. I'm working on the space game you see playing in the background. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted when the stream is happening. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me through Patreon. When we look at our sniper scene, we've positioned our pickup point of our gun so we nicely pick our gun up. In order to handle our weapon better, we want to hold our gun with our other hand as well. To do this, we're going to use a second object that is inherited from our object pickable scene. But instead of this being a visible object, it will purely drive some logic in how we handle our gun. This also means that when we let go of this second object, it needs to revert back to its original position. Note that I may in due time add this logic into XR Tools itself, but today we'll build it right here. So, let's create our inherited scene using the object pickable scene in our XR Tools library. We'll rename this to Two Handed. And then we'll save our scene. I'll put it in effects for now. We need to extend the default script so we can add some of our own logic. We only want our second hand to hold the front of our gun when we've picked our gun up, so we add an export variable to enable this feature. In our setter method, we remember our new value. Then, if we're currently picked up while we're disabling, we want to automatically let go. Finally, we disable our collision shape if applicable. In our ready function, we need to make sure we call our setter so our initial value is applied. As this object will be childed to our gun, we don't want it to apply the normal rigid body behavior, so we change our mode to static. While we're using most of the existing logic, there is one thing that needs to behave very differently, and that is our let go function. So we find the definition of this function in our original script and copy it into our new script. Next, we add a new onready var that records the transform of our object when we start. In our let go function, we first check if we are indeed picked up. If so, we remove ourselves as the child of that object and add ourselves back to our original parent. Next, we set our transform back to the transform we recorded at the start. And we restore our collision mask and collision layer to our original values. Finally, we reset our picked up values. We can now add our two handed scene to our sniper and move it into place. We turn editable children on so we can add a collision shape. We'll size that so that it's roughly indicating the area where we hold our gun. We need to add some logic to our sniper script as well. We start by creating an onready var to store our two handed node in. We can't use our dollar shorthand notation here because we will be reparenting our node. Assigning it to a variable will ensure we keep accessing the correct node even after reparenting. In our pickup function, we can now enable our two handed node to allow the player to grab it with the second hand. And in our let go function, we can disable it again as we're no longer holding our gun. To make sure we actually do something when we're holding the gun with two hands, we're going to add a process function. Note that I underscored a delta as we're not using it. This will make the checking logic happy. Now we check if we've picked up our gun with our second hand. If so, we're going to use the look at function on our gun's pivot point to look at where we're holding the gun. For this we use the origin point of the global transform of our two handed node, which is now tracking our second hand. We also use the Y component of our gun's bases to ensure our gun is orientated the right way. If we're not holding the gun with two hands, we'll reset the bases. This will reset the orientation of our pivot point. Now we can still shoot single handed, which is still pretty hard. 
But if we now grab our gun with our second hand, we can see that we can orient our gun by moving our second hand. The positioning of our hand is way off, so that is something we need to deal with first. Before we do that, let's fix this typo I made in the let go function of our two-handed script. Now, to make sure our hand is in a better position, we want to reposition our two-handed node where our controller point would be. I'm first creating a new spatial here. I'm adding this as a child to our two-handed node and then flipping it around to get the position correct. In hindsight, I probably didn't need this extra step. We'll drag our new anchor node roughly where we need it to be for a proper pickup of our weapon. Note me selecting the pickup point to get a reference for how high this should be. Now we move the collision shape back where we actually want to detect our pickup. The problem we now have is that if we leave things as they are, when we hold our gun with our second hand, our look at will result in the gun being held at an angle as our second pickup point is way higher than our pivot point. For this we'll add a helper spatial node to our two-handed node and call this target. We position this so it is roughly in line with our pivot point. We'll copy our look at position into a separate variable so we can more easily modify this. Now we are going to add our target offset to this, but instead of adding it directly, we're going to use our gun's Y orientation and multiply that with the Y position of our target node. This ensures we move our target down in the proper direction, regardless of the orientation of our hand. As we moved our two-handed node, we also need to change our onready var to point to the new location. Now you can see that we're holding the gun in a much more natural position, and our gun reorientates itself properly. What is also pretty nice is that we don't need to hold our gun precisely. You can see me move my hand forwards and backwards, and our logic still works. We can hold our gun much more stable now. This is where I did find that the scope on our model is actually not big enough. To aim really well, you need to hold the gun too close, and it becomes hard again to hold the gun steady enough. That is something we won't tackle today. What I do want, however, is to hide to the user that we're moving our hand out of place. If we want to show our hand in a fixed position, we're going to have to hide the hand model that is being tracked. As we're using the new hand pose logic of our OpenVR plugin, we don't have direct access to this from our logic. To solve this, we will extend our pickup function script so we can add this information in. We'll create that script in our own folder structure, not within our plugin folder. We'll also apply the script to our right hand's pickup function. In theory, our gun logic so far should work for left-handed people as well. We'll add a new export variable to our new pickup script that allows us to set a node path to our hands node. We'll also add a function that makes it easy for us to retrieve this node. Just for safety, let's make sure our node path is set before calling get node. Now we can set our new properties to the correct nodes for each hand. Back in our two-handed script, we also want to implement our pickup function. For that, we copy the definition of this function from our object pickable script. We start by calling our original logic because we want this to run. Then we can get our hand by calling our new get hand function. And if a hand was returned, we will hide it. Now we copy this code into our let go function. But instead of hiding our hand, we show it again. Now we want to show a hand. For this, we'll add our original left hand model to our gun. We need to turn editable children on so we can set the correct material. I've separated the material out to save space on disk. Using the version with the textures embedded results in a fairly inefficient way Godot handles the fairly high resolution textures. Now we can position our hand roughly in the correct spot. Be sure to move the correct node here. What I really wanted to do here was also pose the hand, but it seems Godot doesn't have a good UI for this. 
I'm planning to investigate this further. If I haven't missed the feature, or if no one wrote a plugin, I might end up building something for this. So for now we'll use the hand as is. We'll hide our hand by default. And we'll rename it. And again, this is an action that requires us to turn editable children back on. Seeing that we don't have access to our gun hand in our two-handed script, we'll have to hide or show it in our sniper script. We'll handle this in our process function. Not the prettiest solution, but it will do. One mistake I made here is that our hand model should be childed to our pivot point, so it'll stay in place on our gun. And of course, we need to turn editable children back on. And we have to fix up our code. And there we go. When we pick up our gun with two hands, our hand model snaps into place. That's all we have time for today. If you found this video useful, a like would be greatly appreciated. Follow me on Twitter, where I regularly post updates and notifications. See you next time!